Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're camping using a yurt from Walmart. So stick around, we have a great show for you. Last time we were out here, we determined that this location right here is more than suitable to fulfill our five basic survival priorities. Shelter, fire, water, food, and tools. So I thought, why not come back here and do a simple, leisurely camping trip where we can just relax and enjoy it. But before I go further, those of you that know me and those of you that watch my channel, you know by now that I'm not a fan of car camping or tent camping. It's just too much BS to worry about and the more people you bring, the more items or the more things you have to tend to or personalities and things like that. However, this is one thing I haven't done yet. And I thought, you know, why not show how some of the bushcraft ideas or things or tasks that we do, how they can transfer into camping, like basic knots and hitches, things like that. How to perform repairs if you need to, or actually improvise some stakes. So, friend of mine, Andrew, you guys met him last time, he'll be out here shortly, he called me up. He says, hey man, Walmart makes a yurt for 98 bucks. I was like, dude. He was like, sweet. So long story short, he purchased it, I borrowed it, and tonight we're going to camp in it. So right now let's go ahead and walk this area and make sure that it's still good to go as far as our four W's and then get that yurt up. Now there's four things you have to be aware of no matter where you go. And those are the four W's. Whether you're tent camping, car camping, you have an RV, or you're out in the backwoods somewhere inside your hammock, the four W's either make or break you. And that's wind, water, wood, and widow makers. Now just like last time, out there it's 100 plus degrees. Under the shade canopy right here, I'm looking at about probably 81, 82 degrees. So I'll welcome that cool breeze. Good to go. Number two. Water. We know from last time there's a creek over here that's full of all types of wildlife and it runs on for miles. Number two, good to go. Number three, being wood. Just like last time, there's dry wood everywhere. So I know for a fact I'm not going to have any problem lighting or sustaining a fire to disinfect water or cook food. Number three, good to go. Lastly is widow makers. And widow makers are dead trees or dead limbs that could fall off in the night and crush or injure me. Just doing my overhead check right here. In this area, nothing's changed. It's good to go. As far as I'm concerned, this location's outstanding.
So it's pretty simple. You have your side poles right here. Put them together. They have a small little pocket right here that pops into. It's good to go. You also got three windows. And the center pole right there, it actually props the yurt up, comes down and passes through this table that comes with it. It's got pockets on each side, passes through that table and into the bottom right here, the bottom of this tarp. The yurt's up and to be honest, it's looking pretty good to go. And for 98 bucks, I can't beat that. However, my one concern is that it's 100 degrees out there, 80 degrees in here. So just being inside that yurt, I'm starting to sweat. So I may want to hang a hammock as a secondary or a fallback position, just in case if it's too unbearable in there tonight, I can go ahead and retreat back to my hammock. Let's get that hung. For my backup sleep system, I'm gonna be rolling with a Camel Nest XL and Atlas straps from ENO, combined with an eight x eight ultralight Equinox tarp. Camo Nest XL. This is my first one, it's also my favorite one. Now just like last time, number one rule of hammocks is only hang this bad boy as far as you're willing to fall. And for me it's about two feet. And just like before, take my full water bottle, provides me water for the night, place it inside that pocket, flip that pocket over top of me, and no mosquito nets needed. And last but not least, on this hammock right here, my secondary or my fallback position. On this end over here, we have an improvised Marlin spike hitch using a bowline. So all we do is pull this toggle out and this line should drop. Over here, we have a quick release using the trucker's hitch. And there's our trucker's hitch. Once again, pull this line, my ridge line will drop. Now before we move on and get too far down the trail, I want to go ahead and stop for a moment, head back over to the yurt and show you some of those cool tips and tricks that you learn in bushcraft and show you how you can apply it to ordinary camping. So let's kick this off with our tent stakes. Now the Walmart yurt comes with these cheap metal stakes right here. They bend really easily. They're less than a foot long. There's no taper at the end. In my opinion, they're crap. So let's head over here and go ahead and make our own stakes. To make your stake, it's quite simple. Just go ahead and grab a branch, no less than a half inch diameter, and about a foot in length. Go down about an inch, and we're gonna make a stop cut. Don't go in any more than half. Now just take your knife and remove that material. Sort of resembles an L7 notch for a trap or a snare. It's good to go. Now on this end right here, go ahead and crown that end. All you're gonna do is remove that material.
If you don't do this, what tends to happen, when you strike on this with a hammer or some type of blunt object, it tends to want to mushroom out on you. Now on your opposite end, all you gotta do is carve a taper. And the last thing you want to do is where you remove that material towards your stop cut, go ahead and remove the material right here in an angle towards your crown. And again, you want to do this so that when you strike on this end right here, it doesn't mushroom off or shear away. And there's your improvised steak. So here's one more feature of this Walmart yurt that I'm not happy with. Every single guideline has a piece of plastic used as a tensioning device. Now this tensioning device is sometimes referred to as a slip, slide, runner, or even dog bone. And what happens is you can loosen it up here, but you want to pull it and it goes around your stake. You pull it towards your tent. And what this does is it creates tension on this top piece of cordage right here, and it pulls the side wall of your tent out, making it that much bigger on the inside. But what tends to happen is over time, the slip, slide, or runner becomes brittle and cracked and eventually breaks. So right now I'll show you a couple of hitches that you can use to pull that side wall out without using the slip, slide, or runner. The first one I want to show you is called the trucker's hitch. It's very versatile. Go around your stake. I'm going to come back about a good foot. All we're going to do is we're going to rotate it and then lay it down. I'm gonna reach inside, pull the excess through, and it creates that loop right there. Now taking my cordage, I'm gonna pass it through that loop and then pull it towards my stake. Now from here, all we're gonna do, I'm gonna pinch my line and my loop together I'm going to drape it over, pull it through. The next one's called a taut line hitch. All you do, go around your stake, get this excess out of the way. Then I'm going to drape it over top of my line. I'm going to go around and through twice. There's once. And there's twice. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go up. And then I'm going to cross over and pull it through. Then just dress it up. And then you can tighten it down. And that works exactly like your slip, slide, and runner. Now the primary and secondary shelters are up and they're looking good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to food because I'm getting hungry. And hey, it's a camping trip, so guess what? I brought food. Check it out.
Let's see what we got going on here. Chicken kebabs, look at that. Nice, love these things. And we got some mesquite 30 minute marinade. So once I get that phone call from my boys, dump that in there, say, hey, we're 30 minutes out. Should be good to go by the time they get here. And last but not least, we have a quick and easy, no mess grill. I'm camping, it's dry out here. I don't want to light a fire. I don't want to deal with anything. So all I gotta do is light this bad boy. Now for me, just because I'm camping or tent camping, doesn't mean I'm gonna not do some type of skills. So I'm looking around and we're talking about fire. Last time we were out here, we created an entire bow drill set from a huge cottonwood that we found. Made a bird's nest and blew it into flame. All I wanna do is fill that notch and utilize the full length of my bow. There we go. And I can turn it over so it will fully engulf. And I can add this to my fire lay. So I'm looking around here and how green this area actually is, I'm quite sure there's some type of mule fat or seep willow. And if I can find that material, I'm quite sure I can make a hand drill set off the landscape. Let's get down here and get looking. That's bow drill for years right there. Look at that cottonwood. Wow. score I guess I found one piece of seep willow sometimes referred to as mule fat and those of you that follow my videos you've seen this before so I'll show a close-up on this here in a few minutes but that place is slim pickings even the bush I guess that this came from is no longer there this is really really dry and it may not work but we'll find out so we're back here at the cottonwoods and I'm gonna use this limb right here it's got a natural crack baton it in half, try to make a fireboard. So we'll have our spindle, or a hand drill spindle, and our fireboard. And just like last time, here's some cottonwood bark. And here's the inner bark fibers. We just peel this off. Process it up and fashion it into a bird's nest.
looking like fire is going to get postponed. We've got a storm coming in. It's starting to rain. So I'm going to go ahead and seek some cover and worst case, shelter's already up and we're there for the night. It is what it is. There's the boys trying to hunker down. I don't know, man. Good luck with that one. Working on skills in the rain. Outstanding. So it's too hot to be in there. So we're gonna go ahead and back to our hammocks. Got the Christmas lights going on.
Uh, that's depressing. You go back to sleep. Uh. Well, one more for the books, right? Absolutely. Nice. That's still a huge cottonwood. Welcome back. This camping trip was outstanding. Now my one regret is we didn't stay the night in the yurt and I apologize for that. The reason why is because the monsoon rains came through here and honestly with the humidity and everything being wet, it was probably around 80 degrees still. Maybe it dipped down to the mid 70s, but we all decided, hey, abandon the primary location, get in our hammocks, where we got that cool breeze blowing past us. So again, I apologize for that. However, once it cools down, we'll bring it back out and give it a go. Thank you for your comments and your support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.